Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. I am back with JJ. He is the Senior Technical Marketing Specialist with ASUS. And today we're reviewing a few more of the uh, ASUS boards that they have here, all based on the P67 chipset supporting Intel's new Sandy Bridge line of microprocessors. Uh, now JJ, we have three different versions here of three of ASUS's uh, I would say top tier line of motherboards. Would I be accurate in, in describing it as that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is um, these are considered are kind of like a specific segmentation products, uh, and that yes, uh, usually are our more premium offerings in terms of the designs and the layouts. So here we have a, a Sabertooth P67, and that's part of the Tough series. That's correct. Uh, over here we have a Workstation a mm -hmm. WS series, mm -hmm. and then over over there on the end. On the end, we have a ROG Republic of Gamers board. Yeah. Um, now, just as far as all these series goes, there have been uh, these types of boards that aren't necessarily P67 chipset boards. Um, how would you classify these series as far as where, where are they aimed? What's the focus, say, for example, with the Tough series? Mm -hmm. um, if, if I'm looking for, at a Tough series board, what do I get by going with that line? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, we first introduced uh, the Tough line with P55, and then we had our, our really great board with the X58 uh, Sabertooth, and now we have the P67 Sabertooth. Uh, originally, what we thought about was we got a lot of feedback from the community that actually were really interested in ROG, but didn't necessarily want all the features that were maybe oriented specifically towards uh, gamers or towards even more so overclockers. But they still wanted a high class of product, and maybe uh, with more customization for maybe fan control, for cooling, and they were all really interested in also getting a class of product that's been validated, really tested, knowing that they're really buying a reliable product. I mean, we're the world's number one motherboard manufacturer for a reason. All our products are extremely reliable and durable. But we said, well, how can we push the envelope in that? So with Sabretooth, we said, let's go to making sure that everything on the board has really been tested to the next degree. So it's about military testing and validation. Uh, we, of course, internally do our own test and validation, but we actually have an independent facility that will take a look at the core componentry that we're using, like the chokes, the drivers, the MOSFETs, and put it through its own battery of tests, validating those components. So inside the box, users will actually get a certificate of reliability that tells them they've passed these military specifications. Not so much because you're going to be using it in a foxhole, uh, you know, and that you need to uh, be ensured be that it's going to work in that type of environment. More so that varying types of usage environments, whether they're really high in ambient heat, maybe really low in temperatures, or maybe you're just really looking for a tough and reliable product that you know is going to work. And that's also the reason why we kick up the warranty. And it's a five-year warranty on the product as opposed to a normal board that's a three-year warranty. So it's about uh, insured performance, reliability, and durability in a product uh, with a special focus towards uh, cooling. So tough series, you have military grade specs, mm -hmm. you have supreme reliability, extended warranty. Um, so it seems like this is actually probably better to contrast with the ROG series, which mm -hmm. is really, uh, as you were saying, geared towards uh, the highest end of like overclockers, enthusiasts who are really going to try to take your hardware, push it as far as you can go. Definitely. This, you would say, same level of quality there, maybe not quite as many of the overclocking features right. uh, yeah. with the ROG board, but still um, you've got a super reliable board with any of the tough Yeah, series. this is it's definitely focused for more users that are going to probably be running stock, but the board is definitely capable of overclocking. It fully supports the K-series, so there's no issues there, but the focus is at generally probably running a stock environment. Okay, so uh, let's go back over to ROG. Mm -hmm. um, with the ROG series is really what you guys have been gearing towards, all the enthusiasts out there, the gamers yeah. who want to take a system, them, build it, run crisis on max settings, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, um, we introduced, you know, uh, ROG now quite a number of boards ago, and uh, we definitely set the bar. A lot of people were like, wow, this is really interesting when we first released the ROG product, and uh, the community's been supremely passionate about it, both the gaming community and the overclocking community. I mean, we're the number one overclocking board on HWBot, which is like the, the hardcore guys that are doing benching, mm -hmm. and then we're also at all the gaming events, you know, PAX, BlizzCon, uh, all that type of stuff. Um, and this is really kind of converged to the two. We bring together a lot of technologies that are for the gamer, for the general enthusiast, and for the overclocker. So that's what ROG is about, is giving you kind of the best in all those environments and, and really just kind of giving you, you know, Ferrari, Lamborghini type of concept board. All right, so we'll get into actually the more specifics of that 
Um, but let's quickly go over the workstation boards. Um, mm -hmm. This series, what are, what are they geared towards? This is a fantastic series. You know, sometimes it gets overlooked, but um, it's a real important board for us. This is for users that are really looking at uh, GPU-oriented computing. So what I mean by GPU-oriented computing is it's a platform that we work really closely with partners on ensuring that it has multiple GPU performance. So generally, anytime you're looking at a WS board, it's not about maybe two-way, it's about usually three-way, and for even some other boards, uh, four-way potential configurations. So this is for a board that somebody that's looking for high performance, usually it's got enhanced network connectivity, which is also usable in that network environment. Um, so usually dual LAN along with multi-GPU, and then high level of efficiency for the VRM, which is important because usually those systems are running um, high loads consistently and for extended periods of time, you know, maybe 12 hours, 14 hours, 24 hours a day. Um, so these systems are, are made to be very reliable, robust in terms of their uh, PCIe options and, uh, and their graphic ability. And when you refer to multiple GPUs, mm -hmm. uh, like this board is clearly set out to, to be capable of supporting, mm -hmm. um, are you more specifically referring to, say, GPU compute type applications? as opposed to, say, multiple GPUs to get the best frame rate possible in a game? Definitely, um, it could go either way. Um, we've actually had our boards even certified uh, for supercomputer status uh, configurations and CUDA support as well. So they can be used in, in both those type of environments, whether we're just looking at somebody that wants a great uh, SLI or three-way SLI enabled system, or is also maybe looking at putting Tesla cards and then running hardcore GPU compute uh, algorithms on their system. So uh, you, you can go either which way. So very versatile boards, uh, mm -hmm. both for workstation environment, but also if you're a gamer, it would be uh, it's a great, work, great setup as well. As well. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's a nice overview of the three lines, but let's get a little bit more specifically. Uh, let's start here with the Touch Series Sabertooth P67. Uh, I don't know if any of you are noticing here, but this is something that I have not seen before. There is a, uh, a plastic casing over this entire mm -hmm. um, the surface of this motherboard, and um, speaking with you earlier about this, but that is not just aesthetic. That actually performs a, a pretty good uh, function. So can yeah. you give us a little overview of that? Yeah, uh, like I talked about, you know, with Tough, we're always looking, how can we innovate? You know, that's our company motto is inspiring innovation, persistent perfection. So how could we push the envelope? Um, so this was a big important factor for us um, is for Tough, cooling is of a lot of importance. So when you actually remove uh, what we call here the thermal armor cover, uh, there's actually a shunted design. So there's actually uh, cross hatches that allow airflow to actually be spread out evenly across the board so that it can receive a higher level of cooling and help minimize board level temperatures. To even bring that up further, this part right here, uh, you can actually remove it and add your own fan to it to help increase the airflow that's being supplied to the board. Um, in our own internal testing, we found that this can really actually improve uh, your, your temperatures that you're running from as little as maybe three to five C to as much as 15 and to 18 C on the upper end range. So it can really reduce the onboard temperature. So yeah, it looks cool, but it actually does serve a function. And uh, to allow the user to actually see this in proof, we actually have set sensors actually across the board. There's nine sensors that with our AI Suite 2 software, users will actually be able to see a mapping, a thorough mapping of the temperatures spread out across the board real time. So they can actually pinpoint and see this area is running hotter. Maybe I want to reposition a fan here, maybe change the airflow. So it's a really allowing users to have an unprecedented level of control on how they're going to cool their board and their system. So if you want to set up optimal cooling, I imagine, uh I mean, I've seen people uh, in videos and use case scenarios before mm -hmm. set up a system using like a thermal gun, something like that, where yeah. you can actually tell. But with the sensors scattered across the board, you could actually set up your system, do lots of different tweaking with fan configurations, however you have mm -hmm. set up, so that you can make sure you're getting adequate cooling across the board. Yep. Any hot spots you have, they're going to show up. Using yeah, that. and it's actually in some ways better than a thermal gun, unless you've got a really expensive like flare imaging gun. Some people that use an infrared temperature gun don't realize that if you don't have an entirely even color, you can't get an accurate temperature reading. Oh. So you'd actually have to paint your whole motherboard black <laughs> to be able to get a correct temperature gauge on your parts. Which isn't always... Uh... Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to go paint you know, a motherboard. So, so uh, go over all the logos. And we it. wanted to enable uh, a way that the user could easily get that information. Rounding out the board, we still keep a lot of the features that we set uh, with the mainstream board lineup that we did previously. Here we get the digital VRM. Um, we step up to even a higher level of choke. The chokes, as, as we talked about, are, are military validated in terms of their spec, you but they're actually, cool logos on there. they're actually com designed on a new design process that we called super alloy. Um, it's actually a composite material, kind of like almost like a concrete 
we squish everything down mm -hmm. and make it one unified piece. This helps us to drive more current, more power, um, and also minimize any type of noise that might be emitted by the board. Um, we maintain the Intel LAN solution on here, so still offering that high class of performance, the dual slot spacing, the front USB 3, all the right angle connectivity, and the UEFI BIOS implementation. On top of that, we've got class leading BIOS fan controls. We allow you to set manual target temperatures for low and high. That's available on our entire P67 lineup, but we've even given you some additional options on this board as well. So really a standout board. Awesome. So that's the Sabertooth P67. A lot of innovation on this board. Mm -hmm. Definitely a great choice for anyone looking to build on the P67 chipset. Let's move on to the workstation board. Yep. Asus P8, P67, WS. So here uh, with this guy, uh, you can see for one, right off the bat, we have a real advanced heat pipe mechanism, really beefy. Um, this is, of course, to help maintain heat dissipation from the 16th stage uh, digital VRM, but okay. we've stepped up into now three-way SLI support. So you can see this is a really GPU-friendly board, right? Definitely. So you've got one, two, three, four PCI uh, by 16 physical slots, and you can run full three-way SLI support on here. Uh, so it's a, it's a really robust board for people that are looking for multi-GPU uh, computing. On top of that, we're still maintaining a lot of the other features that we talked about in terms of the UFI BIOS support, the digital VRM. We have the, uh, <clears throat> the USB 3 on the front, on the back. We have uh, all the right angle connectivity. And we also, uh, for this workstation environment, we have these uh, kind of rised internal USB ports. Um, this was specifically requested from users that actually will sometimes be running um, software like 3D Studio Max or Maya that require like dongles. Mm -hmm. Some of these dongles can be very expensive so they don't want to externally leave them on a back port where they can be maybe stolen. Um, so it allows you to internally have it in the system and always equipped it so that the, uh, the program is always unlocked essentially. You can always immediately use it. That's very handy. So I actually got a couple USB actual plugs there um, rather than just the pin headers that you normally have on a motherboard. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. And uh, the other big step up here, too, is that it features dual Intel LAN controllers. Oh, nice. As uh, this is a workstation environment, and we're looking for the highest level of performance in network configurations, we, we've equipped it two Intel LAN controllers. So we've really pushed up in terms of the performance that you can expect there. And uh, I.O., as you can see, is uh, quite rich, a whole lot of USB, uh, the Firewire, and it does come with a bracket for eSATA support as well. Very nice. That is another excellent option, particularly for a workstation environment, but... Heck, if you want to run triple SLI, you can do it yeah. on that board as well. All right, here's the big daddy. This is the uh, Maximus 4 Extreme ROG P67 board. Yeah, this thing is pretty much like designed for the future. Um, <laughs> this is a, a whole lot of board in every respect. So um, we pretty much took about everything you could possibly put on a board and have put it on here, but still at the same time maintaining a focus on giving people uh, features and functionality that they actually want. So when we take a look at the I.O., we all know that USB 3 is a big deal. So you can see there's nothing but USB 3 on the back. That's two, four, six, eight USB 3 that is on the back. Wow. How many uh, USB 3 controllers are actually? Uh, we actually have a s additional USB 3 controllers with uh, via USB 3 hubs implemented to be able to actually use the USB 3 on there. Wow. So a lot of USB 3. We still also give you the actual USB 3 front header as well. It's located oh, here. Right so in, in maximum, you actually have 10 USB 3 ports. That's the most USB 3 ports I've ever seen. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's one thing, right? Uh, but then we pushed it up a notch. We brought back the dual Intel LAN performance to help set the bar. So as you can see, these features, uh, while ROG is known for overclocking, these aren't to serve the overclocking community. This is for the users that are just looking to have the most robust connectivity available to them. So got the dual Intel LAN. We also add our BT module. Um, now on ROG boards, this is a little bit special. It's also called our RC Bluetooth. This allows for essentially overclocking, monitoring, post functionality to be equipped on a smartphone enabled device or tablet based device. So we have support for Windows, Symbian, um, Android and um, uh, Apple based devices as well. So you can essentially connect this with that and be able to control the system externally. We had a little bit of experience with that last time you were here, but if you guys haven't uh, checked it out, with an ROG board, um, the ones that are capable of that, you can actually be overclocking the board using your smartphone, yep. using a laptop, using a netbook. Um, it, it's pretty interesting, because, <laughs> but it gives, definitely gives you a lot of room to work with and uh, very, very... Yeah, uh, and, and it's all hardware control based. So, um, you know, although you're controlling it from an external device, no resources are occurring and it's directly accessing to the BIOS on a hardware level. That's also that USB port, that's our ROG Connect. 
Now, uh, to continue to kind of evolve the features that we have here, we also have USB BIOS flashing. So for when people, when they first get this board or benchers, they're looking to get the latest BIOS on here, no CPU, no memory, no graphics card is required. All they've got to do is take their flash drive, put the flash file on there, stick it into this port, hold down the ROG Connect button, and it will low level overwrite the BIOS real time. All that you have to have is just standby power connected. So you don't have to get the CPU on there, the heat sink, all that stuff. Nope, just happens right off the bat. And you can do it to either BIOS, because we have two BIOS chips on here, you can just switch back and forth, and each BIOS is entirely bootable. So while some other designs sometimes have a dual BIOS, each BIOS can't be used as its own boot. So we can store maybe overclock settings on one, and then the other one might be our gaming or our 24 settings on, on the other. I imagine that's particularly handy as uh, new processors keep continuing to come out, uh, especially if you have a newer processor that is not supported by the original version of the BIOS. Correct. Uh, just to be able to flash that off USB. Very handy and definitely saves you the trip to uh, the CPU store. Yeah, to yeah. To get a compatible CPU in there just to update your BIOS so you can use your newer CPU. Um, um, continuing on the board here, as you see, we just got a one, whole bunch. One more quick thing here yeah. since we're mentioning BIOS. Uh, we should be saying UFI, am I correct in that? That's correct. It's okay. UFI BIOS present on all the boards. All right. um, as we noted before, though, it's a BIOS replacement. It's not an actual BIOS. Okay. Yeah. All right, so UFI. All, in, all up in here. <laughs> Continuing forward here, we've got a massive um, heat, heat pipe array to help dissipate the VRM, which is also a digital VRM, but we've really stepped up a notch. A little bit difficult to see, but uh, the quality component here is really taken to the next level. We're using a eight-phase, super eight-phase design with a super ML capacitor, super high amp amperage chokes, the same type of chokes that we talked about before, uh, like on the Sabertooth that are that super alloy design. So that's really been designed for high-level overclocking K, uh, you know, you can get over 5 gigahertz overclocking on air. This board has been designed to get 5, 5.1, 5.2, maybe even 5.3 and sustain that at those high frequencies. So we're, we're really impressed by being able to do that. You can see the same chokes here um, for the DRAM, for really strong DRAM overclocking performance. On the PCIe here, you can see really robust PCIe options with the NF200 also have not only just two-way, but full three-way SLI support on the board as well. And... Uh, Rounding out the rest, pretty much, you know, your right angle connectivity. We also still give you, in addition to the normal Intel SATA 6G2 connections, mm -hmm. uh, we're also giving you a Marvell SATA 6G. This is special, though. Um, it's actually Marvell's second generation SATA 6G controller that supports much higher bandwidth. Oh, okay. So you get even better performance. So it's not just an additional SATA 6G, it's Marvell's uh, higher class of product. Uh, rounding out the Ridley Rest here, you've got some quick stuff, you know, like uh, your voltage read points debug LED, and it goes on. Uh, this is really the, the board for the users that are just looking for the best of the best. We could probably take another 20 minutes just going over everything on this board, but um, if you're looking for uh, the best of the best, everything you could possibly need right now, all in the same board. This is it, Maximus 4 Extreme ROG from ASUS. Uh, any other closing points to make about this one here? No, uh, you know, this is, uh, this will also have actually a special version of our UA5 BIOS with one killer feature for guys that have always wanted to be able to quickly get access to their BIOS settings. You can print screen the BIOS. Wow. That so. is just one of, one of <laughs> UFI. Uh, for those of you who have been using BIOS for the last 25 years, uh, definitely a big improvement to jump up to UFI. So, yeah. um, and we'll, we'll be showing it later on. Perfect. We will have a follow-up video showing the UFI capabilities of some of these ASUS boards. That is it for the Maximus 4 Extreme for now. Uh, JJ, thank you again thank for you. coming and visiting with us today, showing us some of your enthusiast boards here available from ASUS. Check them out on Newegg.com. Uh, my name is Paul for Newegg TV. We'll see you next time, everyone.